Hi guys, uh, Rebecca Colors here again. Um, I am going to be presenting today uh, for CPA Connect School of Technology uh, intermediate level uh, for mobile devices, mobile, mobile. Uh, get in where you fit in. So let me just share this screen so you can see my slide presentation. Dun, dun, dun. Move this guy down. This lady, as the case is actually. Um, you may see my name on here as Carolyn Cribble. I'm recording on her uh, Zoom, but yeah, I am Rebecca Colors. So my pronouns are she, her. Um, welcome to CPA Connect School of Technology Intermediate Level, uh, eight-week program for mobile devices, week one, a solid foundation. Um, I will just take a short opportunity to introduce myself. I am an AmeriCorps service member. I serve through the Greater Cleveland Neighborhood Centers Association with the Community Connector Corps program. I work on the iConnect team. We provide uh, tech support to seniors as well as life enrichment programming online. Um, prior to COVID, we were doing more of this in person, but um, as so many others, we are, are moved online for the time being. Um, I am the dedicated liaison working with the Community Partnership on Aging as a sort of intern, but I'm still an AmeriCorps service member. But um, through uh, what we've been doing with iConnect, we have developed a program with uh, Community Partnership on Aging that we are, are calling CPA Connects. Uh, and we wanted to offer this uh, sort of eight week program to give people that maybe don't feel as confident about using their devices a little more feeling of competency and a little more knowledge about how to navigate uh, their personal device. So we do have another class that's dedicated to uh, PC and laptop because it's a little bit different. Um, a lot of crossover, but a little bit different than your mobile device. So this particular session is geared towards a uh, smartphone or tablet. Uh, this first week, we're going over just some really basic concepts and terminology to make sure that we're all on the same page going forward through the rest of our uh, seven weeks after this session. So let's get started. Um, and yeah, I'm recording this after the fact. So there is no one else in the session besides me. So normally we uh, would be at, at our first session sort of going through and introducing as we're gonna spend the next um, eight, the eight weeks together, but um, you just got my introduction. So uh, yeah, let's dive right in with terminology. Um, those links at the top there are to some uh, longer lists of terminology that you may find. I'm just going to go over some basic terms that you're going to find in, in computer land. Uh, four and 5G. This is the fourth or, and or fifth generation of mobile connectivity. It's basically just telling you the how fast the bandwidth is uh, for your particular device and the speed that uh, you can download and access information on the internet. So bigger, better, faster, more is the name of the game with all of uh, our technology. Um, Android and iPhone, these are the platforms that contain the operating systems, middleware and applications for your device. If you don't have uh, Apple products, iPhones, or, or iPad, then you have Android. So Android is kind of like everything else that's not Apple. Uh, the carrier, your carrier is the company that provides your cell phone and or internet service. So um, AT&T, Verizon, um, there's Sprint. I feel like I haven't heard that one in a while, but yeah, there's a bunch of different providers out there. Hopefully you're getting the best bang for your buck. Your data plan are your, is your, your term of service, uh, how much data you have per month. More and more people have unlimited data plans. So bully for you, if you have that, that's fantastic. If you don't have unlimited data, you wanna be careful about when you're connected to Wi-Fi and when you're connected to data for your smartphone. Because um, 
you can eat eat up data really quickly, especially if you're streaming. Sorry, I'm playing with my hair so much. Um, video, uh, it your data can go like that. So we'll talk about that more as we go on, but definitely important to know if you do not have an unlimited data plan. Find My device is a feature that you um, can turn on on your phone. It has to be activated, but I highly suggest that you do. If for some unfortunate reason you part company with your phone when you're out somewhere, this feature will enable you to hopefully be able to track down your device and uh, get back with it. Uh, I feel like if I lost my phone, I would, it would almost feel like losing an arm. And um, I wouldn't necessarily have the money to go buy a new one right away. So I do encourage, yes, you're being tracked if you have find my device on, but it's kind of the price we pay. And you're being tracked by a GPS or global positioning system. This is a satellite technology that kind of uh, is connected to your phone in space. <laughs> That's um, telling you where you are in the world or telling the satellite where you are in the world. Um, good and bad. Uh, a hotspot. This is a sort of little device that independently allows you to connect to the internet through a Wi-Fi connection um, without having like Wi-Fi at your house or being connected to a public Wi-Fi. Hotspots though uh, can be are a little fickle. Sometimes they work better than others. So it's good. It's good technology when it works. Uh, your phone can be a hotspot a lot of times for other devices that you have, <clears throat> but that will suck your battery right down. So if you're using your phone as a hotspot, um, you probably want to be plugged in. You can buy a locked or an unlocked phone. Um, an unlocked phone is usually a little bit more expensive than a locked one. Uh, but if you get an unlocked phone, then you can go, after you have the physical phone, you can go to any carrier that you want and set up a plan with them. Uh, if you get a locked phone, you generally, even though it's cheaper up front, but you usually have to go with the provider that you bought the phone from. So pick and choose. If you're happy with your carrier and you have an opportunity to get a less expensive phone, then that's great. But yeah, it's a trade-off. So SD card, uh, secure digital card. This is a memory card that can take content from your mobile device and then it, you can transfer that onto another device. Maybe you are find, getting a little message on your phone that you can't do certain things because you don't have enough memory and maybe you've taken a lot of pictures. <laughs> and so you wanna keep them, but you know you don't need to probably keep them all on your phone because your phone generally has a little bit smaller of memory than maybe your, your laptop computer or your desktop computer does. One thing, um, generally you can't stick that SD card right into your other device. So you um, that comes with a little like converter. That's just another piece of hardware that you will have to pick up to then be able to plug the SD card into your other device. Your SIM card uh, that stands for subscriber identity module card, that's internal in your phone and it's got, um, it stores your contacts, and your data plan. So you can transfer that to, say you get a new phone, um, but you don't wanna have to sit there and like manually enter all your people in for contacts. Um, you can kind of trade that SIM card over to your new phone. So this is the action that one takes to, uh, where you just run your finger across the screen and it um, either slides the screen over or erases, swipes away um, an app or, uh, or a window. Um, but yeah, that swiping is that touch screen technology where you just sort of run your finger across the device. Wi-Fi, wireless network. So, that's like your smartphone or your laptop that doesn't have to be plugged in to your modem to work to access the internet. Okay, and like I said, those links that were at the top, those will take you to further lists um, of terminology if you have interest to sort of cruise that. 
icons, um, you'll need to memorize these and probably others to successfully navigate your device. But um, these are some basic ones that I just wanted to go over. Uh, you will definitely need to know what these little pictures mean to get the best use. So this little X is um, just closing things down. If you wanna close a browser tab, if you wanna close out a little dialog box, um, whatever it is, just hit that X and it goes away. The two arrows, one up, one down, this is the symbol for data. Um, this is really important. As I was saying, if you don't have an unlimited data plan, you'll wanna be mindful of when your device is connected to data and when it's connected to Wi-Fi. Um, if you're just streaming, music or a podcast, it's not using that much data, but if you're streaming videos, it uses a lot. And you could wipe out your monthly data in a, a day if you're uh, streaming videos all day long. So being mindful of that, definitely important. Whenever you can, it's best to connect to Wi-Fi um, as long as you trust the place where you're at. And Public Wi-Fi is generally pretty safe these days. Um, trash can, uh, just what it sounds like, throwing something away. Um, in the previous video, I was saying how like some devices have a sort of two-step process. Uh, Microsoft has where you um, <clears throat> put something in the trash and then you have to empty the trash uh, that second time to officially get rid of whatever it is. But on your smartphone, uh, it doesn't take that second step. So once you put something, once you click trash on something, be prepared that you are not going to see that something again um, on your smartphone or your, uh, your tablet. PS, um, an iPad is a type of tablet. So same type of deal, same type of device. Um, microphone, we've all become pretty aware of this little icon through our Zoom journey as we've been going through the um, pandemic. Uh, this is, when you see this icon, you have an opportunity to um, have audio for your voice on your device. It may record or it may just be live, but that means that you can um, just talk and get some kind of response, hopefully. <laughs> the next two are uh, ways to favorite. So you sometimes will see this little banner or flag without the star. Sometimes you'll just see a star and sometimes oopsies, you'll see um, the heart. But these are ways to sort of favorite a page or an item um, that you might want to come back to again. If you're shopping on Etsy and you see a nice ceramic mug that you might like to get for um, your friend, uh, you can click on the little heart on the page and it will save it to your favorites list, etc. But those are ways to just make a special mark so that you can find something again that you like. These next two are really important. You, these uh, two overflow menus, as they're called, are going to allow you to access further content on sites that you go to. The three little dots, one on top of the other, um, is generally used for settings, um, which is kind of like how, where you're gonna find everything that you, I keep advancing the slide inadvertently, sorry about that. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, Settings is where you're going to find everything that you want to do to kind of like manipulate your device or the browser that you're on to, to have more options and things to do. Um, so definitely want to take note of where that is located. Sometimes this the three lines are called a hamburger icon, um, kind of like bun and then something yummy in the middle. But uh, a lot of times you'll see this on a web page uh, it's gonna, when you click on it, it's gonna expand and give you more options of things to navigate th through a website. Um, if all of those things were just sort of listed, it could look a little cluttered on the home page. So condense that down and then you gotta open it up to kind of get the options again. Magnifying glass is always gonna be a search. So um, you may be looking through a search engine 
or you may be looking internally on a website to find a page within a website. And when you see this little magnifying glass icon, that is a place where you can uh, click in and then type in what you're looking for. The gear is also an icon for settings. So that overflow menu and the gear, a lot of times will have a similar function. Excuse me, but this is always gonna take you to further options of ways that you can manipulate, again, either your browser or the device itself. Remember that gear. It will look a little bit different depending on the site sometimes, but it always is sort of this gear shape. Um, this little almost a triangle, not quite a triangle, is the icon for sharing. So um, if you found a picture that or a video that you like, um, or you found a web page that you think someone else might be interested in and you want to send it to them, uh, look for this little sort of sideways V. And when you click on that, it'll open out to more options of ways that you can share that uh, image or file or web page with your friend um, or loved one. <laughs> Um, this little circle with the arrows is refresh. Sometimes it will just have one arrow, but um, either way, it's just sort of like re-ups the page to the most current information. Sometimes some, you may, someone may say, I just sent you an email and you don't see it yet. Hit the refresh button and chances are it'll pop up because that'll just kind of re-up the, the page and give you, like I said, that most current information available. Okay. So these icons and many more, but especially on your smartphone and your tablet, icons are the way that you're going to navigate. So commit these to memory and more that uh, you'll encounter. And the more you do it, the more you'll get used to it. Don't worry. So you have what's called a control center on your smartphone or your tablet, and you can access it by swiping either from the top or the bottom of the device. And it's going to give, it's going to open out into a little bit of a panel that has some quick access, uh, little sort of toggles or buttons. Um, and they're usually identified by icon, but you know, that'll have things on it like connecting to Wi-Fi, muting your device, whether or not you're on data, rotating the screen, flashlight, hugely popular and very useful, little uh, quick access on your smartphone, um, know where that is, uh, going to airplane mode. That means you don't have a, a Wi-Fi connection and you have it sort of like actively blocked um, in airplane mode. Different reasons why you might wanna do that. Connecting to Bluetooth, turning the location on the device on and off, all these things are, can generally be found on that uh, control center panel. All of these things can also be found in settings. We'll talk about that, but some things you use a little more frequently than others. So you want that little sort of quick access from your control center control panel. I told you we would talk about settings later and now we are. <laughs> um, settings is like, your best friend on your device. Everything that you wanna to try to do, you're gonna find through the settings to manipulate the appearance or the functionality of your device. Some of the things that you can find there will be the different accounts on your device, the different apps that are downloaded onto your device and the settings for those apps, push notifications, appearance, many other things, uh, how you're paying for it, all that will be accessed through your settings. Biometrics and security. Biometrics, um, a lot of devices have a fingerprint sensor, so you can just touch it and then it will recognize your fingerprint. Again, great when it works. <laughs> um, sometimes it doesn't read it as well, so know what your uh, little pin is, but um, yeah, that can be a quick link. And another type of biometrics is a retinal scan of your, your eye. So um, different ways, but those are all through your settings. Um, connections, by that I mean Wi-Fi and data, um, the setup of that device care. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit later, optimizing your battery, um, other things that you can do to kind of like take care of your device internally, the display, notification, sound, voice assistant is set up through your settings. 
and um, that's your Siri or Hey Google. Um, but it can be super. Cortana is another voice assistant. Uh, <laughs> my phone just clicked on when I said Hey Google. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, another little uh, quick access way to find information without having to type it all out. So voice assistant can be really helpful. Wallpapers themes are found in your setting. That's sort of the image that's on your phone when you turn it on. You can have stock images. There's tons of ones that you can pay for. Um, might want to put a picture of your grandkids on there um, or a favorite spot on the beach at sunset, a uh, picture that you took. All those things you can do through settings. Okay. I mentioned earlier uh, about connecting to Wi-Fi uh, and or data. And like I said, if you have an unlimited data plan, unlimited data plan, then you're kind of good to go, but not all of us have that. So you're gonna wanna be aware of whether or not you're connected to Wi-Fi or you're connected to data. Generally at, at home, you can just Go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi and do everything that you want to do. But sometimes when you're out in the world, there won't always be a public Wi-Fi to connect into. And for, at those times, you'll need to tap into your data if you want to access something on the internet. Um, public Wi-Fi is generally very safe. Are there some risks? Like, yes, it's possible that someone is sitting in a van outside of the Starbucks trying to hack people's computers, but it's just, it, it's not that common. Like it, it's generally pretty safe and the firewalls are really good to protect uh, your device. So but I just mentioned Starbucks. I, when I go into Starbucks, if I'm sitting, when it's not the pandemic, <laughs> I will totally log on to the public Wi-Fi there. When I go to the Cleveland Clinic, I log on to their Wi-Fi. When I'm at the public library, I log on to their Wi-Fi. Um, it's very safe. I've never had any kind of problem. Uh, and definitely be aware of the data usage. Uh, like I said, streaming videos will gobble up. So uh, you don't want to generally do that on when you're on data if you have a limited data plan. So data, Wi-Fi, and then you'll also see on your cell phone and your uh, tablet these sort of these bars that are staggered going up. This is telling you what your reception is like. So you may have just one bar or two, your signal's weak, and you may not be able to get a very good phone call or um, connection to the internet uh, because of that. So um, Sometimes if you can just like move around somewhere else in the building, sometimes if you're in an elevator, you'll have a weak signal um, in a brick building or in a basement, you can have a weak signal. So it's just a matter of, sort of like moving around until you find a better one. Or um, they do make Wi-Fi extender devices. There may be like a certain room in your house that's just the way the house is laid out and where your modem is in your house. It's, you just don't get a good signal. So you can buy this Wi-Fi extender and it sort of like picture or picks up rather the, the existing uh, Wi-Fi and then sort of broadcasts it a little bit more extensively. So you can get to those areas of the house that don't currently get the signal, FYI. Restarts and updates. Uh, it is a good idea to occasionally restart your phone um, in particular. Uh, we tend to not turn our phone off um, just because we sort of always have it there at the ready, um, but it's good for your device um, to occasionally turn it on and off. So you might want to think about like once a week, maybe make it part of your like Sunday ritual of getting ready for the new week just to stop and restart your phone. Um, our tablet, we tend to kind of turn off, I think more so when we're done with it, but maybe not. Uh, it's a good idea to occasionally go ahead and do that restart. It just kind of resets everything and gets it running uh, more smoothly. You really need to do all the, uh, the software updates that come, um, particularly like 
system software updates. Uh, your apps will have updates to them. You may or may not want to, uh, you may not like an update that comes with an app and you can undo it. But if you get to where you're like three or four updates back, it's just not going to work as well. So sometimes the appearance will change or they'll change certain functions. And it's almost like you kind of just have to roll with it in some respects, because um, if you let it get too out of date, it's just not gonna work as well anymore. Constantly technology is updating. And so uh, unfortunately, when we get a device, it kind of almost starts to dep depreciate as soon as we have it. Uh, um, it it they're like I, we were talking earlier about the four and five G bandwidth. So, like my personal phone, I have a Galaxy S nine. It came out in twenty eighteen. Um, it's getting kind of old, unfortunately, uh, for the newest technology. If I wasn't doing my updates regularly, like my phone would not even work because it just doesn't talk as well. So really important to do all of your software updates and to keep everything running smoothly um, and quickly. Uh, you'll get notifications. I don't know exactly on Apple products how it looks, um, but on like on my Galaxy, I get a little N uh, in a little circle when my when an app has a an update, and so that's how I know it's generally like a little circle up on like sort of like the upper corner of the app, um, or yeah, like the app icon, or when you actually open the app, and then it's like actually in like the upper right or left hand corner. But um, that's how you know that there's an update available. Okay, battery care, brick and charging cords. Um, some people advocate for letting your battery run down um, and then recharging it to get the longest life. Some people like to keep their device always sort of charged up. I am definitely a charger upper person, um, but to each their own. Uh, they do say that when you get a new device that you should let uh, the battery run down a few times, this is called discharging, and that that does promote the longest life of your battery. But as far as like over time using it, letting it run down or keeping it charged up, there hasn't really been any definitive evidence that one works better over the other. It really is just a personal preference. You can optimize your battery through the settings. Sometimes um, an app won't close all the way, even after it's been swiped off. And those sort of background apps can really drain your battery very quickly. Uh, when you optimize, you put those apps to what's called putting them to sleep. So basically turning them off. And um, also kind of like consolidates everything. So Optimizing is a good thing periodically to do. And a lot of times you'll get a notification uh, to optimize. So definitely take advantage of that. Again, that's something that you could even kind of do almost like once a week um, at that same time when you're doing your restart. Uh, the brick or the block, uh, two different terms for the same thing. This is the sort of, I'll show you mine here little rectangle, uh, iPhone ones are a little more square, but this is the device that your cord from your, from your device, your phone or your tablet plugs into one end, plugs into your device, the other end plugs into this little brick, and then that plugs into the wall. So part of your charging system. Um, your brick, and your cord are specific to your device. They do have universal kits that have like a lot of different little heads that you can change things out and that, but like your device has a specific port on it that not just any cord can fit into. So know that um, your cord and or your brick 
definitely will die before your device dies. So it's a really good idea to have a backup on hand. You may or may not be able to run out to a store straight away to get a new one. You may not be able to get a cord that works with your device, just like at the dollar store or whatever. Um, they can be pricey. So uh, it's just, a, I, I think it's always a really good idea to have a backup on hand. Or to the wise. So closing tabs and closing apps. Um, browsers have multiple tabs. You can see that easily when you're on a laptop or a PC, but it's not quite as noticeable when you're on the phone. Um, the tablet also, you can kind of generally see multiple browser tabs, particularly on your smartphone. You can't really tell how many you have open. You just kind of open Chrome and then there you go. But if you are never closing your tabs, sometimes you can have 50 tabs running, 100 tabs running we've seen, and that is really slowing down your device and it's also sucking down your battery. Um, when you open Google Chrome, up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, there's the three little dots, one atop the other, that's that uh, overflow menu that takes you into settings. And next to that, to the left of that overflow menu, there's a little uh, square and it's got a number inside of it. And that number tells you how many tabs you have open. Check mine right now. I think I try to keep it like pretty trimmed down. Mine has a nine. So I have nine tabs open right now on my phone. Um, that's definitely like drawing on my battery. So if, when you click on that, it'll give you options to, uh, close the tabs. Um, you can also do that through settings. Um, you can group the tabs. So there may be places that you go to a lot. And so you do just want to keep them open, but there's probably some one-off, uh, web visits that you've done that you don't need to like, just have an open tab. So uh, yeah, talked about that they're draining the battery when certain apps that aren't closed. And generally when you swipe those off the screen, it just closes that app out. But occasionally it does not. And that's when you can go in through the optimizing and like actually put them to sleep. Okay, this uh, presentation has been brought to you in partnership by the Community Partnership on Aging and iConnect. Um, as stated at the beginning, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, I hope that you will come back uh, uh, for the rest of the series and have a great day. Let me just escape out of here so I can stop this recording. Have a good one, bye. Mm -hmm.